So let's go over the paints that I'm going to be putting in this palette. Okay, the first slot is a wild card entry. It is buff titanium. I'm interested to see what this does for my painting style. It's not a necessary pigment for you at all. It's not really important in terms of mixes or florals. I just want to see what it does for my painting. And this is my personal palette. So I'm going to go ahead and put buff titanium in there. I've decided to eliminate the cadmium yellow and I'm going to go with a warm yellow first, which is quinacridone gold. And then I'm putting my trusty nickel azo yellow in. Now the nickel azo yellow is going to be the kind of mid slash cool yellow. And it's probably the one I'm going to use the most. Um, but I do want that warmer golden yellow here just in case. Next up, I have a transparent pyrrole orange, and that's the convenience orange. It's not necessary, but it's just so pretty and bright and so beautiful and transparent, and I just am excited to have it in my palette. Then I have my warm red, which is pyrrole scarlet. It's going to go there. And a cool red, which is quinacridone rose. Now, that's enough red, right? A warm and a cool red, but I like to have more pinks and reds for mixing. So I'm going with Permanent Alizarin Crimson. It's a classic for a reason. And the Magenta. This is by Lucas. Now, I came across this paint by accident. I got it on sale somewhere, and I honestly just love this Magenta. I haven't found this exact brightness of this Magenta in other brands, and this is a really well-known... Um, especially in Europe, artist quality paint brand. So the magenta is going there. And then I have decided to go with Imperial Purple. I'm going to just try it because I've had dioxazine purple in my palette for a long time, and I just want to try something new. I can always, you know, take it out and put something else in if I don't like it, but I'm going to go with Imperial Purple for a while. Then I have French Ultramarine Blue. Again, I'm using the French Ultramarine just because I have it. It came in another package of Daniel Smith paint that I had, and I know this goes slightly warmer than regular Ultramarine Blue, but don't go out of your way to get this if you already have Ultramarine Blue. Then I have Thalo Blue Green Shade. And then my greens. I love my convenience greens. So I've decided Cascade Green, coming in right next to the blue, um, because it does have a little bit of a blueness to it. It's just a really pretty green, and I'm interested to see how it works for me. Then Hooker's Green, that old standby. Then I have Sap Green that I'm going to try out, and Green Gold. Of course, we have to have Green Gold. And then my last three spots are going to be Transparent Red Oxide, Burnt Umber, and Payne's Gray. So I'm going to go through and squeeze these out and then I'm going to make sure to let it dry at least overnight before I start using all the paint so it has a chance to cure a little bit. I'm really excited to start using a new palette of paints to see how it influences my art, how it influences my painting. Over the next few days I'm going to make some color mixing charts with these and just kind of play around with it, do some loose floral painting to see how the colors mix and mingle and act with each other. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see how changing some of the pigments I use might change or might not change my art overall. So I will speed this up real quick as I just go around and fill up these pans. And I'm really excited to hear what you have to say about this lesson, what you've learned from it, what you've taken away from it. Are you interested in testing out more pigments of your own? Are you interested in any of these particular pigments? Make sure you check out the downloads. I'm going to put scans in of any of the, the swatches that I made, as well as a couple other little tidbits in the downloads. So make sure you check that out.